The grind is this beginning stage of a business in which it feels like nothing is happening. You have a little bit of an idea of what you're doing and you might have even launched something and then it's like crickets, nothing happens. And that period is the grind because it's like every turn of the dial takes so much energy. And what a lot of entrepreneurs will do during this period is everything. They're like, I'll do a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And this guy says, do this and do that. I'm gonna follow this guy. And they try and dump all this stuff into the beginning of their business, which burns them out and prevents them from getting the business off the ground. So in this video, I wanna share with you how to get a business off the ground through the grind, if you will. Because if you can get through that stage, what I call the growth and the gold that start to lift off, period, is so much fun and it happens so much faster if you can stack the deck to allow you to get through the grind as fast as possible. When you are lost in the operations of a business that's doing just a few bucks, like not enough to be able to pay your bills or to pay payroll or whatever stage of business you're at, it becomes tempting for you to just go in and work harder and do more. But the real good breakthrough ideas happen when you can step away from it and get more ideas and inspiration. I was speaking with one of our students inside of our incubator. Her name's Alea. She's right at this point right now where she's got some things planted and she's waiting for them to sprout. And she asked me the question, what can I do right now to make things go faster? Here's what I told her to do. The protection of that inspiration and that focus of creating from the place that is Alea at her best. Because Alea at 10% might work really, really hard and get nothing done. Whereas Alea at 100% or even 80% doesn't work that hard at all, but is from an inspired place and she moves mountains, right? It's like we've all experienced those times. So some of your best ideas will come when you just cut, you know, everything's on track. You you've lined up your timelines, you've got some space. That's a reward. Like you've done some hard work, like it's okay. Like, and you'll get some of your best ideas when you're walking, you know, in, in the, the woods. woods or, you know, go on a boat ride with some friends for the weekend instead of trying to launch the second yeah. product. Yeah. To me, it felt like, um, it should be such a grind right now that if I'm waiting on, like I've done the hard work of prototyping in the first place and building a okay audience and doing the things. And so for me, it feels like all of a sudden, if everything's in the hands of like a product designer and a manufacturer and, you know, whoever else that, you know, I should be doing way more, even though Marty, there's still a ton for me to do every day. So that that's helpful. Like you just planted a bunch of seeds, mm -hmm. right? Like, and now they're growing and like, you're going to have to water them for a while and wait, but like you're in the grind, you're doing the right things right now. Your, your, your next step is go like build the foundation for what needs to exist when things start sprouting, which looks like relationships. It looks like, and, and again, like I'm, I'm gonna be a broken record here. Get super clear on this vision, like we're doing with where you are right now in the incubator and go tell everybody you know about this vision. Like make appointments with people that you'd love to do business with. Make appointments with people who are mentors to you or that you would like to be mentors to and give them your pitch deck. It's why we put people through this process of being super clear on this pitch deck. So you can have those conversations with people because they can work with you or advise you or they know people who can. And so it is all about building those relationships right now. Everything that you want is in control by someone else. If you want money, relationships are your way to get money. If you need advice, relationships are your way to advice. If you need distribution, you can figure that whole thing out or you can meet one person who has distribution in retail or has a large audience on Instagram or YouTube or has a big email list. Relationships are the thing that will carry you to where you want to go. And in order for you to be building great relationships, you have to be in a good place. It means you need to be well rested. It means you need to be operating from a place of service rather than trying to extract every dollar from each interaction. So the more that you can show up to relationships with excitement, clarity, and service, the faster you'll make the connections that you need in order to get the business off the ground. The 
biggest momentum shifts come from relationships. Like you can go build an audience, right? But the way you'll build an audience is by sharing your vision and by creating partnerships, building relationships and sharing your vision. How do you build relationships and partnerships? By sharing your vision. So your focus right now, like how do you get momentum? Get real clear on that vision. What do you do then? You share that vision. What do you share that vision for? Because it will bring you the relationships with other people who are excited about what you're doing. What types of relationships? People who are excited and know other people. What kind of people? People who are connected with audiences and influencers and money and expertise. So the way you get momentum right now is by casting a vision and by knowing what types of relationships you're going for over the next six months. What we talk about in the incubator is that those relationships are audiences, capital, and operations. Operations is things like people who know sales channels like Amazon or ClickBank or Facebook ads or whatever. So those types of relationships are the momentum that will set you up for that big launch and that scale six months from now. Most entrepreneurs are thinking so short term that the only way that they know to develop momentum is in the form of sales. So every day they're not taking a sale, they're stressed. But in this phase of your business, the momentum comes from relationships. And the relationships come from you sharing that vision. If you have relationships that can carry you forward, and if you're building an audience, even a small audience, of people who want what you got, that will translate to money. Most people wanna go right to the money. What do I do to sell this thing right away? Well, the, the route to making a lot of money is by having great relationships or great connection with your audience, potential customers. When you've been contributing to relationships and people who want what you got, it's really, really easy to take sales. So easy, in fact, that once you have relationships that can support you, and a few people who care about what you're trying to do, you can pre-sell whatever product you want. You can take sales for a product that doesn't even exist yet. You can take sales for products that may be sitting on the shelf or in production for six more months. That's the power of showing up to relationships and serving the people that you want to help through your business. People are ready to pay you money even if your product isn't done yet. So always go to people first. I have two students inside of our incubator who have done this really well. They've built good relationships with influencers. They started a podcast to create value for their target customer. They've been really getting clear on their vision and sharing it with as many people as possible. So I told them that they had the option, if they wanted, to turn that into sales, even though they weren't ready yet. Here's what I told them. You'll have a much easier time getting capital in the form of an investor, somebody you know, a loan, whatever it is, if you have pre-sales. Like if you if you take a pre-sales and you say, look how much demand there is for this, and you have the influencers who are mailing for this and are putting like real effort behind taking sales, and you don't have the capital to be go to go out and do the amount of inventory run that you're gonna need in order to fulfill those orders. Like it's totally reasonable for you to raise money on the basis of having pre-orders. That is the easiest money in the world to raise. That's two phone calls. And that that is, it, even if your pre-sale was like Elon did for the Cybertruck, which is make a hundred dollar deposit down to hold your spot for Cybertruck. I mean, check this out. Elon pre-sold like a hundred thousand Cybertrucks. It was a hundred dollar deposit. But what did that do to Tesla's stock price? Mm. It sent it through the frickin' roof because now he could say that they had done however many million dollars in pre-sales. Well, they hadn't. They just took $100 deposits. But that sent the stock through the roof, which gave Tesla an amazing valuation, and gave them all the capital they ever could need to go into manufacturing on Cybertruck. Like, that's how big boys play. So there's, there's a lot of benefit for you doing a pre-sale just so you have the ability to prove the concept in the marketplace and then go get the capital that you need because you'll have people fighting to give it to you if you have orders in the door. But how do you actually build those relationships? 
How do you actually approach people that you might not have ever partnered with before? How do you make a connection with the influencer or the investor or the advisor or whoever it is that you want to connect with? How do you open up that relationship so that you can make it possible? Because for a lot of entrepreneurs, they're starting at a dead zero, a dead start. I don't have a network. I don't have, I don't know a bunch of investors. I don't have a connection to a celebrity or an influencer who can help me spread the word about this business. So how do you open up the conversation? Well, in this uh, very interesting clip <laughs> where wine was flowing, you're gonna hear me go through a very simple and silly three-stage process that once you hear it, it's gonna be burned into your brain forever and you'll never forget how this goes. So here's how you open relationships with people that you want to work with. The three-step process, are you ready? Yep. yep. This is developed after 15 seconds of Research and so discovery. So you're saying it's state of the art. This is this this state of the art. State of the Step art. number one: tell them what you're trying to do. Step two. Step two: ask them if they want to be involved. Number three: go for the smallest yes possible. Tag. You're it. You just. <laughs> <laughs> That's the acronym. Tag. I was waiting for it. Sorry about that. Spilled our wine. Wine all over the table, runner. Let's break down the, the, the tag for you. Now it's legit. <laughs> the state-of-the-art tag blueprint. <laughs> Tell them what you're after. Just say, yep. hey, we're creating a natural PMST company because we saw a problem in the market. Number two, A. A, I like that. For ask. Ask them, is this something that you think you might like to be involved in? Three, G, G, go for the smallest yes possible. Great, well, what? We, we're really looking for somebody that we can work with long-term. Is that something you'd be open to talking about? Yes. Mm. Yes, okay. Yeah. 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 That's how you open. And then from there, it's just finding out what they want. Cool, do you do any consulting? Have you ever had an equity relationship before? We're kind of new to this, and so like we're navigating it. How might you be incentivized to be a part of something like this? I can spot when an entrepreneur is gonna win. Even a beginning entrepreneur, I know that they're gonna win when they're operating from a place of what can I give to somebody else. When somebody's got nothing, when somebody's starting from scratch and all they're thinking about is giving to other people, I know that person's gonna win. Because the vast majority of people go out there looking at what can I get out of this? What can that person do for me? What can I extract from other people? Those people lose because at the very beginning, they have nothing to offer and nobody wants to give them anything. And so they try to manipulate or get really good at sales and it just doesn't serve them when you could just operate from a place of contribution and service and punt whatever you're gonna get out of it. That's how you build relationships. It just so happens that when you do that, those relationships open up doors to creating whatever you want to create in the world. Even as I'm saying that, I'm having a little bit of conviction about myself of, you know what, I could be even more giving. Like, I, I every time I've been depressed, it's because I'm thinking about myself. Every time I've had a project not work out, it's because I was thinking about what I was gonna get out of it. Every time I've had a relationship not go how I wanted to, is because I was focused on what that person was gonna do for me versus thinking about the other person. Like every time something doesn't go the way I want it to, it's because I'm just fucking selfish. But when you just show up to serve and to create for other people, you like people can't help wanna work with you. So if you can show up from that place at the very beginning of your business, I as an investor want to invest in you. If an entrepreneur has that mindset and that focus and that attitude from the very beginning, there's investors out there who want to give them money. There are other businesses, there are other companies, there are other customers that want to support that type of person. So it always starts with you, always. So if you watch this video and you saw me working with some of these entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one, and you saw us going through their business and finding out how they could be more successful, it's because we have a mentoring group where my team and I get very involved in these students' businesses. We get them clear on their vision, we help them launch profitably, and we open up relationships 
that make it faster and easier for them to grow and scale. It's something called the Capitalism Incubator. So you can find out more and you can apply to be a part of our incubator over at capitalism.com slash inc, I-N-C, capitalism.com slash inc. And there you can find out more about what we actually do in here and you can see some of our success stories and you can meet some of the entrepreneurs who have gone through this process. And if you've watched this video and you're like, I think I'm finally ready to do this in a way that creates real value and follow a process that has built seven figure businesses that I can sell for a really big payday, then go over to capitalism.com slash inc. And we would love to work with an entrepreneur who is showing up ready to serve and create value for other people. I hope you found value in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ryan Daniel Moran from capitalism.com and I invest in entrepreneurs like you. Thanks so much for watching.